Hi everyone, welcome back again. We've got a wonderful drawing ahead of us. We are going to be drawing um, a core and this is for Terry in grade three. You have been asking and asking and so I've made sure that I had it in my plan. And we are going to have our paper in Lance in portrait mode, which is standing upright so that our, our beautiful macaw can come down. I'm using watercolors today again. Um, you can use whatever you would like. You can use pencil crowns and copy the colors or look up colors on the internet. There are 22 different species of macaw. Five of them are unfortunately extinct, but there are the remaining ones. There are so many different types of color variations. So have a look online and see what you can find. Today we're going to do the sort of red and yellow and blue, which is my favorite. Um, so you can use your pencil crowns, you can use cookies, um, or you can follow along with me and we're gonna just use our watercolors, which we're getting really good and well practiced at. We're gonna start with his head at the top here. And um, he's, he's got a big beak. His head's going to come down. We're going to have a wing coming down. He's going to be sitting on a branch and then his tail coming down at the bottom. So we're going to use our whole page. So we want to start quite near the top of our page, slightly on the, just a little bit on the left. And we're going to start with his eye. And it's mostly a round circular eye, but it's, it does have some little corners. And you can do another little outline. And a lot of people. All right, macaws have big beaks. Okay, these are not dainty creatures. They are, in fact, one of the largest species of um, of parrots. Okay, so I've done two curved lines, and the top beak curves down and up again, and then the bottom beak is a bit shorter and it's got a bit of a wave to it and it, there's a little gap in the middle and we're going to make it sort of 3d so let's put in his tongue because he the parrots have tongues and then we can put in the other side of his beak all right a macaw has got sort of a white face so from the top of his beak we are going to draw a curved line that comes down and it can be a little bit wavy, all these waves because it's nature, around, down around the eye and we're going to then curve the other way and join up to the bottom of his beak. And this patch here that we have here is where he's got his nostril. All right, he's got a lot of face details to come, which we're going to come back to in a bit. Let's do the top of his head. So remember, as we're drawing, our brains are trying to make sense of what we're drawing. And it's screaming at me right now, what on earth is that? If you hadn't told me that I was drawing a parrot, I would not know. I would think these are two eyes and what is this on the side here? I would not know. So just say, oh, be quiet brain, we're getting there. Gonna put his head down, big curve coming down, and on the other side, just do some waves, some feathers, and he's got another detail here, which I'm just gonna put. He's got a black sort of collar underneath. Right, let's do his body. So from here, we're gonna just come straight down. And this side is going to come straight down but quite long. Alright, so this is his wing coming down, which we're going to complete. Let's do his toes. They have got big claws. So we're going to do two big sausages. One and two. If you remember drawing the two cans very similar. Our claw is just much bigger sort of bird I think. Well he's got bigger feet for sure and we can join that with a branch. We just want the branch just there. We're going to finish the branch 
later. Okay, so don't draw any more branches than that. We're going to finish this the branch in a bit. Okay, in fact, what I'm going to do is I want to make his, his wing. I really want to show it off, so I'm going to make it as if this branch is ending here. I just put some zigzags and I do the other side of the broken branch and there's the end of the branch and I'll be able to, it's not going to block my view of his beautiful feathers. All right, let's do his, his wing detail. So I'm going to come down a little bit down his shoulder and there's a gentle curve line that comes out. And then it comes down past my branch and joining up to this point at the bottom. Alright, remember if we're going too fast then pause the video. Let us do his body. Oh, this is some of the branch thing. I'm going to jump under the branch here and I want to come down and I'm going to do some feathers here. Some of them can be slightly longer, shorter. Just like that. And then I'm going to want some more longer feathers. Now, depending on how much space you have on your page, you can actually make these feathers really long. I feel actually maybe I should have left some more space. But there is long, elegant, finger-shaped feathers. Some of them can be a bit shorter, and then some others behind. I'm just going to make mine like it's going off the page, because I really think I should have made it a bit longer. And one at the back there. Right. I'm going to put finish this branch. I'm just going to put a little branch attached. My line is not straight, it's sort of wriggling like it's a real branch. And I want to put in his other wing. That goes. I want to put in his other wing. So down here, I'm just going to do a little curve and coming down. And then jump under the branch. I want it to line up. And I'm going to put his other wing over there. Alright, we've got his basic shape. Now we are going to do his, some of his feather details. So let's start with this big wing. And over the top here I'm going to do some sort of varied feather shapes. And this is going to divide the different colors that he has. Do another row. Some big, some small. And at the bottom we can draw in some long straight lines. All those flight feathers. And I like to put a little curl, a curve at the end, like those feathers are. Right to the end. Okay, and let's do the other side here. Just a few details. Those flight feathers coming down. Now macaws, they make for life. And often, they, and they actually spend a lot of time with their mates. So they often seem flying together. And close together, it's almost their wings almost touching as they fly through the, um, through the rainforest. And because they're so intelligent and gregarious, which means that they love to spend time with other people, they, other, other birds, of their kind, they um, right. Let's look at his face. He's got a, a very peculiar pattern on his face. I'm just going to put a dotted line from the middle of his beak to his eye, just as a dividing line, which I need to just help me. And from that line, about below his eye, I'm going to do. A sort of this black stripe that goes under his eye and goes into the corner of the shape that I made. Apparently these markings are as unique as fingerprints. 
do another one so every bird has got very slightly different markings let's do one more down and nicely around it up again all right then he also has some that go up over his eye now remember if these are unique that means if yours are different to mine and that's actually perfect all right and there is our our um and there is our Parrot, our macaw parrot. Right, I am going to do a red macaw, which has got red and yellow and blue are his main colors. But there are many different kinds of colors of macaw, blue and green or green and yellow. Um, so you can look online if you want to choose your own colors. Remember now as we're painting that you must have two glasses of water. You must have a scrap piece of paper to test your colors on and my paper towel which has disappeared where has it gone i don't know where it is i'm going to use a, a tissue today my paper towel has disappeared there it is okay i'm using a bigger brush today this is a size eight which is much bigger than what you have at home just so that our video doesn't get too long but you can use whatever you have if you're using your number two brush you're going to be able to get a lot of lovely texture um, with his feathers and so don't let those marks show but we are being thoughtful about the direction of our strokes if my feathers are coming down I don't want to be painting sideways right so I'm going to just very simply use the colors that I have today in my paint palette I'm not going to mix too much I'm going to start with red and I'm going to paint this whole area red as well as this these feathers down here. So I'm going to fast forward that part and you can, I'll see you on the other side. I've got a base of red. This part, top part of his shoulders also red. I've got my red covered I can easily when I, it's had a chance to dry the one or two patches that are not quite dry yet I can go back and and put another thin layer of red with my dry brush technique for example maybe on the edge of his body coming in or under his wing or maybe on these feathers at the bottom to try and give more of that 3d effect so remember watercolor is all about layering we can't go dark straight away always we need to be patient and and layer I am going to do black now. This area under here is black and his beak is black. Here you want to differentiate your colors. The tongue and the back of his um, beak there. So what I'm just doing is I'm just used, doing a bit lighter. And just so you can see my details right the next part here is yellow all right and this yellow i'm going to use just the plain yellow um he they'll often have um some green tips so what i didn't do was i didn't draw in um the feather details on here it's like this so if you want to you can put in lines down here for the feathers i'm just going to leave it nice and simple for now but you can do that especially if you are older grade five or grade six or seven then you can add in your extra details if you are in grade three theory you can also add in details i know you love adding lots of details don't let that stop you all right our remaining feathers are blue however some of these feathers in his tail are actually red. So I'm going to pick three or four of these long ones and I'll make them red. And then I'm going to paint the rest of his feathers blue. Alright, 
he's missing his feet and his and his arms. So let's do that. His feet are sort of a gray color. So I'm going to get some black and it's quite dark. I'm going to use, I've got some of this underpainting color that we've used for flowers. And I'm just going to put that in. What, um, macaws come from the Amazon rainforest. They love rainforests and most of you have drawn rainforest backgrounds so you can add in more amazing backgrounds. I'm just going to put a little touch on his eye as well. When we do eyeballs of animals or people, we shouldn't leave them white, white, white. They always have a little grey shadow around, around them just helps to bring them to life right I'm gonna do my branch and I've got my browns from where I was mixing yesterday so I've got green sienna and I've got my bit of black here and I want to mix those together to paint my branch And there's our beautiful McCall. I hope that you enjoyed drawing this and whether you use pencil crowns or cookies or your watercolors um, or even if you chose one of the different variations, I want you to really enjoy this beautiful creature that God has created. It's a very highly threatened animal in the rainforest in the Amazon. And as I said, five of this 22 species are already extinct and the rest are terribly endangered so we must look after these creatures while we have them so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you tomorrow for the next drawing